but most students believe most students believe they cannot get ms or phd applications accepted with scholarship if they don't have a lot of publications which is not true in this video i want to talk about how you can highlight your research potential in your cv with zero publications stick around What's up everybody, Sadia Khaf here. I'm an electrical engineer doing PhD in machine learning and on this channel, I usually help students get into their dream engineering universities. Today we are talking about four ways in which you can highlight your research potential on your CV with zero publications. So let's start. My first tip is to use your undergrad projects. Undergrad projects are very, very underrated undergrad underrated in these projects you do conduct a lot of research for these student projects you definitely read a lot of research papers you definitely conduct research on what other people have done you definitely look what kind of things work what kind of things don't work what's the methodology you're gonna use you even write reports for these projects that somewhat resemble research reports so you do conduct a lot of research, you just don't know it. Using undergrad projects as research experience is an amazing way to highlight your research potential on your CV because you can highlight some of your undergrad projects on your CV, list all the research you conducted for those projects, even leave some link with the details of the project maybe where you have a detailed project report or maybe where you have conducted some literature survey related to the project and you have some research papers listed where you did some research before you made this project. So using undergrad projects is an amazing way to highlight your research potential on your CV. My second tip is conducting research is not that difficult. Trust me on that. You don't really need a supervisor or a co-author to supervise you to conduct research. After all, you want to apply for an MS or a PhD position, which are research positions. So if you don't genuinely enjoy conducting research, then there's no point applying for MS or PhD, which is research based in the first place. And if you are genuinely passionate about conducting research, then you can conduct independent research. It's very easy. Just gather a couple of research papers related to the field for which you're applying for MS or PhD position and write a survey paper about them. Read all of them, conduct a comparative analysis. What did they do? What did they miss? What are the assumptions they used? What was good and bad about each paper and how you would have done a certain thing or what are your proposed solutions for the problem that you're trying to solve and submit it to any of the journals, any of the conferences, wherever you find appropriate. And depending upon the scope of the research you conducted, the number of papers you included in this paper, your paper has a pretty decent chance of getting accepted because you conducted a thorough research on what other people are doing in your field. And this will be a highly valuable experience towards your MS or PhD degree in the first place because you already have now a wealth of knowledge by reading all these papers before even you started your MS or PhD in the subject and it will even give you some clarity about whether or not you really want to pursue that field because a lot of times we start research in certain field and then we end up realizing oh no this is not really what i thought this field would be the name sounded very cool but the actual reality is it it's, it's all just boring math so in that case you will be better off <laughs> not getting stuck in an ms or phd that you don't like so do conduct your research try to submit it to a good quality conference or journal paper. My third tip here is if you do need to get your work reviewed, if you do need someone to review your work, it's not very difficult either. If you have, for example, conducted certain research, written a paper, and the only factor that's stopping you from submitting it to a good quality paper is that you don't have enough history and you are afraid that since you don't have a supervisor listed on it, since you don't have a co-author listed on it, my paper might get rejected. It's very easy to ask people to be your co-authors, especially if you offer them that they don't have to do anything. Approach any one working in your field before sending them your manuscript, ask them if they would like to be your co-author and tell them all they have to do is review the paper, 
and put their name on it and they don't have to do any of the work tell them i have done all the work this is my paper i just need someone more credible than me to review it and be my co-author so you can reach out to different people in your field and invite them to be your co-authors through this way by the way if you are enjoying my videos about creating amazing cvs i have created a detailed skillshare course about it i will leave a link in the description you don't even have to pay for skillshare to attend my course it's a very short course you can just sign up for the free trial it gives you i think seven or ten days free trial so you can just take my course and cancel the subscription anytime you like you can take my course basically for free just by signing up for a free trial. I will leave the link to the course in the description. My tip number four is to use your internship experience. So if you have done any kind of an internship in your undergrad, be it an internship at your own university or be it an internship outside at an industry maybe, this is your research experience. In your internship, you have conducted some kind of surveys you have conducted some kind of experiments, you have gotten some kind of results. You can list that as your research experience, especially if you did an academic internship, especially if you work with a research institute. So if you don't have any research experience on your CV right now and you don't have any internships, I highly encourage you to apply for some research related internships so that you can have a decent research experience on your CV, even if you don't have any publications and that research internship experience will count as valuable as having some papers on your CV when you're applying for these research-based MS and PhD positions. And my last tip here for you is to use your final year project as a research, research experience. Your final year project is a year long, sometimes a year and a half or two years long project. You students in engineering spend a ridiculous amount of time making their final year projects, thinking about their final year projects, conducting literature surveys for their final year projects. And at the end of the final year project, we all already write an FYP report. In that final year project report, we have already written our literature surveys, literature analysis, we have already written our methodology, we have already written the, con the experiments that we have conducted, and we have already written our conclusions about the project. That extensive long report is basically a very long research paper. Why not turn that into a research paper? A lot of people get scared and intimidated by the name, the word research paper. They think that it has to be an innovation, it has to be very groundbreaking invention to make it to a research paper. Whereas a lot of times, a lot of research papers list very basic, very simple ideas. So your final year project is a huge opportunity to turn your final year project report into a research paper. You just need to take the time to take the important bits of your report, summarize it into a two to four pages research paper, and it has basically all of the same sections. It has an abstract, an introduction, a literature review. It has your simulations and experiments section. And finally, it has some results analysis and a conclusion section. So it's basically just a short version of whatever you have already written for your final year project report. So why not use that report and turn it into a research paper and submit it to a good quality conference or journal? That way, that paper that you have just submitted becomes your research experience. Even if your paper gets rejected, you still have a proof of work that you can show on your applications for MS and PhD that you have submitted a research paper. And then later professors can ask you if you can send them a copy of the work that you submitted. They can analyze the quality of your work from that and they can judge if they want to hire you or not as a future student. And this shows initiative on your part that even though you did not have a specific research experience, you took your project and turned it into a research paper and submitted it. So it shows the courage on your part. It's always a great idea to turn your final year project into a research paper and submit it, even if it gets rejected. I hope these tips helped you. I have another video on my channel about why 96% MS and PhD applications keep getting rejected and it has nothing to do with the number of publications on your CV why they get rejected, what's the real reason and how you can beat that 96% rejection. I will link that video here and you can watch that.
I hope I've given you something valuable in this video, enough to make you subscribe. See you in the next one.